Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the cell in the course uh, molecular biology. So, so far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the basic properties of the biological system where we have discussed about the cellular structures, we discussed how the cells are dividing and we, then we also discussed how the cells are dying through a process known as apoptosis. And uh, in the previous module, we were discussing about the different types of biomolecules. So, we have discussed about the DNA, we have discussed about RNA and we also discussed about the protein and the enzyme. So, with this brief discussion about the uh, biological system, we have discussed about the uh, um, biomolecules. Uh, we would like to re, uh, you know the ask the questions how the information from the one generation to another generation is. Uh, passing and uh, what are the different types of uh, molecules which could be responsible for uh, passing the information from the one generation to another generation. So, now what you see is that uh, I am sure you might have noticed that some of your own traits are matching with your parents. Similarly, the traits what are present in the plants they are also of mixed traits right. They are also having the some information from the one parent and the some information from the other parents. And on the other hand, you might have seen that some of the uh, diseases which are per, which are propagating within a particular uh, type of uh, families. For example, I am sure you might have noticed the traits like uh, height, eye color uh, and uh, other kinds of phenomena like the hair colors and the, the way you speak and the way you actually you know behave is all being transferred from the parents to the child. Similarly, you might have seen that the seeds uh, from a red color flowering plant always produce red color flowers naturally, right? And then you might have seen also the different kinds of variations like if you have the cross breeding of a white flower and the red flower, you will see that the they were actually having the pink flower and so on. And uh, there is a classical examples of the hemophilia also where which are, uh, actually runs uh, in different types of families from generation to generation. Now, the first question comes that how does it happen and the answer to this question is that it is all because of the heredity. Okay? Uh, so, what is heredity? So, heredity or also called as inheritance is the passing on the traits from the parental generation to the offsprings either through the asexual reproduction or the sexual reproduction. The offspring of the cells obtain the genetic information of their parents. Okay? So, because of the hereditary or the inheritance, you are acquiring the uh, traits or you are acquiring the phenomena or acquiring the phenotypes from your parents. Uh, definitely, when it is, if it is a asexual reproduction, the the traits are going to be uh, completely 100% intact. But if it is a uh, sexual reproduction, then it is actually going to be uh, mixed because you are going to have the 50% traits from your mother and the 50% traits from your parent, uh, father actually. And uh, depending upon who, which trait is dominating and which trait is recessive, it is actually going to show you the phenotype. So, we are not going to get into the detail of the hereditary or we are not going to get into the genetics part. So, because that is beyond the scope of this particular course and uh, that we that for that you can actually go through some of the MOOCs courses on the genetic material uh, on the genetics itself and uh, that may help you to understand uh, this particular phenomena that how the uh, traits are getting uh, you know uh, expressed in some generation and they are actually being not expressed in other generation as well. So, uh, the first question comes that uh, if it is actually the thing that uh, you are actually going to acquire the, uh, the traits from the uh, mother and the father, uh, how this particular type of phenomena is happening and who is responsible for that. So, who is responsible for carrying the information from one generation to another generation and the responsible the molecule which is responsible for this particular information or what is for this particular phenomena is called as the gen genome or I will say genetic material because it is actually going 
from one generation to another generation and because of that this particular uh, molecule is being called as the genetic material not the genome actually. And uh, I am sure when we were discussing about the cell and even in the previous lecture also when we were talking about the biomolecule, if you see the cell, uh, the cell is very, very complicated, right. It actually has a nucleus, it has the uh, cytoplasm, it actually has uh, uh, different types of organelles. In the prokaryotic system also you have all those things but not the membrane bound, right. So, you also have the uh, miniaturized level of or the primitive uh, conditions of the electron transport chains, you also have the other kinds of things. So, basically uh, if you think about the uh, wherever the information can be stored, uh, there are multiple uh, possibilities. One is in a cell it can be nucleus or I will say the genome or I will say DNA because we know that the nucleus contains the genome which is made up of, of the DNA. The second possibility is the cytosol or I will say uh, cytosol actually right and cytosol is mainly being contained one molecule which is called as protein and plus RNA right. So, RNA is also present in cytosol. Then you also have the uh, membrane bound organelles. So, uh, membrane bound organelles are also being made up of, of the protein and RN lipids right because the membrane and lipids right. So, uh, we basically have the, uh, the candidate molecules which are responsible for carrying the information. But because the technique was not evolved or how the people have find out the who is actually responsible for carrying the information is a very long journey right. So, let us first, so wh what are the molecules we have? We have the DNA, we have the potential target, uh, potential molecules like the DNA, we have the proteins, we have the RNA. And uh, these are the molecules which are actually having the sequence, which are uh, having the you know, stored of information. For example, you know that the DNA is made up of, of the nucleotides. So, that also is actually providing the uh, sequence of nucleotides. So, that also can actually carry the enormous amount of information. I am sure you can calculate if you have 4 nucleotides, how many different types of random combinations could be possible to give you the different types of random uh, DNA sequences. Similarly, you have the protein which is made up of, of the 20 amino acids and all these 20 amino acids random combinations can give you the enormous uh, information. So, that is how and the RNA also right the same way the RNA. So, these 3 molecules are actually having the similar kind of nature. Apart from that you also have the lipid, but lipid does not have that kind of uh, uh, flexibility of storing the information. So, that is why the lipid is uh, straight forward is being discarded by the scientist. What they were focusing on the DNA, protein and RNA. But before that the people have done the crude experiment because until the people have not discovered the DNA, protein and RNA, they were under the uh, you know the they were not having the technology. So, they were doing the experiment, they were trying to identify the, uh, the carrier molecules which actually carries the information from one generation to another generation and that is how they have done multiple type of experiment. So, let us see how we have you know uh, we have done the what is the history of identifying the genotic, genetic material and then we will talk going to discuss about the different types of classical experiments how people have uh, you know figure out whether the DNA is the genetic material or protein or RNA. So, the first uh, experiment is uh, been done by the Austria uh, scientist or I will say the priest uh, Greer John Mendel. Okay. So, uh, he is uh, considered to be the father of genetics and he actually has done extensive experiment with the pea plants and where he has taken the uh, a combination of traits and that is how he have come up with the classical rules of the genetic, uh, the, the classical rules of the genetics. And uh, so, what is the history of the genetic material? Okay. So, it is well known that uh, the qualities are passed down from one generation to the next. The offspring shares certain characteristics with both of their parents. 
but the question is who is responsible for this it was first time on the basis of its interest in the plant hybridization studies on the sweet pea the python sativum a monk in a monastery in austria gregor john mendel tried to find out this answer he proposed that the some factor so in uh, when the gregor john mendel was doing the experiment there was no technology ev uh, evolvement there were no technique available to say that dna rna or protein but he said that there are factors and he used the term factors that carry the information on the manifestation of a characteristic or phenotype and the how the traits are being passed uh, from one generation to another generation uh, so since uh, he gave the clue about this particular factor and he said that this factor could be dominant factor and recessive factors and so on and all that and all these uh, uh, law of uh, genetics you might have studied in uh, some of the textbooks so uh, then people have started uh, you know identifying this particular factor so in the late uh, 90s uh, century by the three biologists humor degrees uh, Carl Cornes and the Eric Vaughan uh, worked on the Mendel works and proposed that different characters have the individual heredity car carriers and the inheritance of a specific traits in an organism called particles. So, D. virus actually called these units as the pan genes. So, and uh, he actually came up with the uh, some of the theory also that. Uh, so, he actually discovered that these factors which uh, the Mendel was talking about is nothing but it is actually the pan genes which actually go and uh, if the pan genes can move from one generation to another generation they are actually going to carry the that particular characteristic or the quality. But in the almost uh, 20 years later when the William J Johnson and uh, William Watson actually uh, uh, propose the term gene and the genetics respectively but Edward Strasberger and the other continue to refer to the basic physical and functional unit of heredity as the pan gene. So basically uh, from the pan gene uh, it becomes gene and uh, the gene was being considered to be a responsible factor right. So, genes are present in chromosome which are evenly distributed between the two daughter cells during the cell division and the biochemical study showed that the chromosomes are consist of protein and the DNA. So, it is clear that the gene is present in chromosome right and we are going to discuss about this nuclear packing and all that when in uh, when we are going to talk about the genetic material. And the chromosome is made up of, of two parts right the protein part or the DNA part. So, the first question is that is the genetic material proteins or the DNA which means out of this chromosome uh, which one is more responsible the protein part or the DNA part because it has the both the components right. So, until 1940s the proteins were thought of a genetic material because proteins are polymer made up of, of the 20 different types of amino acids which are abundant and encode the diverse information and you can easily calculate in fact you can actually go with that activity right how many different types of amino acid compositions or amino acid combination could be possible if you have the 20 different types of amino acids for example you have a very small protein of 100 amino acid. If you have a small protein of 100 amino acid and you can have the 20 different random combinations you can actually be able to calculate that number. That number is going to be very 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 big actually. However, uh, based on the certain experiments that have been conducted from the time to time it was finally shown that the DNA not the protein actually carry the genetic material. But we are actually going to discuss in detail about this particular these experiments and the conclusion comes that it is a DNA which is actually being the uh, molecule present within the chromosome and that is actually going to carry the information from one generation to another generation. Now the first question comes uh, what could be the properties of the genetic material what could be the possible or the uh, probable properties you should have or you a molecule should have then only you can say that, okay this is the genetic material. 
So the properties of the genetic material. Okay, so for a molecule to be considered as G genetic material, because you can have the some requisite uh, parameters to accomplish the its task, right? What is the uh, task? Task is to carry the information from one generation to next generation right that is the task of a genetic material and that is why it should have a prerequisite uh, conditions. What are the conditions? Number 1, number 1 is stability, number 2 is uh, it should be heritable and express, expression, number 3 it should have the uh, mutations and then number 4 it should be getting replicated. So, stability it must contain all the biologically useful informations in a stable form which means it should be stable, it should be uh, you know it should be resistance for any kind of damages and if it there is a damage it should have a mechanism to recover from that particular damages. Then it should be having the heritability and the expression. So, it should process a hereditary units which follow the Mendelian inheritance and control the expression of a particular phenotype. So, it should have the components, it should have the, uh, the and I think all these you are going to understand when we are going to talk about the transcription and translation that how there, there are different uh, components which are present within the genetic material and that actually controls the expression of a particular gene. And uh, so, you should have these kind of switches, you can have these kind of switches so that you can actually be able to modulate the expression of the particular gene and that is how you are actually going to modulate uh, the overall phenotype of that particular organisms. I am sure you might have noticed when you are going into the sun right and it is very hot outside you always start sweating right. So, that sweating occurs because there is a uh, you know there is a expression profiling changes within your body and that is how they started uh, you know uh, throwing the sweat. Uh, same is true when you are entering into a you know into a cold room or entering into a place where you have AC and then you actually you know all your set is disappeared and then you also feel cold right. And when you feel cold you find that the, the skin is actually you know becoming more uh, uh, you know the con uh, contract actually okay. So, these things uh, actually been you know uh, done simply by the information what is present inside the genetic material. Then the third property is about the mutations right. So, genetic material is also going to acquire the mutations, some of the mutations could be good, some of the mutations could be wrong and that is how the mutation uh, accumulation of mutation is actually going to result into change in the phenotype and that will be responsible for evolution right. So, mutation is the random change which may occur and that may be a chance for evolution actually. And then number 4 is replication because as I said you know genetic material is you are going to have only one copy of genetic material. So, that genetic material has to be replicated and that is how you are going to have two copy of genetic material and then you can actually be able to in a situation that uh, you can be able to share. Remember that when we were talking about the cell cycle we said that right during the S phase the, 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 the DNA is actually going to be duplicated right and then only it is actually going to be shared between the cell and the same is true for between the parents and the offspring as well. Then you are going to have the two copy of genome and then when you are going to share one copy with your offspring and the uh, so on. So, that should have the ability to synthesize its own copies. So, this replication is actually what we are going to discuss in our subsequent module we are going to talk about the replication, transcription and translation. Now, uh, there are some uh, direct evidences uh, or experimental evidences and there are some indirect evidences which prove that the DNA as a genetic material. Okay. So, there are uh, direct as well as indirect evidences which have ruled out the protein uh, or the RNA as a genetic material and that has proved that the DNA is actually the uh, most acceptable genetic material which is present starting from the prokaryotes to mammals. There are exceptions and these exceptions also we are going to discuss. So, in 1928 
uh, Frederick uh, Griffith actually performed an experiment for the bacterial transformation and by doing these experiments he proved that actually the information what is uh, being present in the DNA is actually carried from one bacteria to another bacteria and that is how it is actually going to change its phenotype and that is how it is actually going to be responsible for the, uh, the death of the mice. Then in 1944, the Oswald, Avery and McLeod and McCarthy actually done the experiment on the transformations and that also has proved that it is actually going to be uh, the DNA which is going to be responsible factor. And then we have the Alfred Hershey and the Chase experiment on the T even uh, bacteriophage and that is how it, that also has proved that the DNA is a genetic material. So, if you go by the timeline in 1869, the Frederick Matcher actually isolated the, the nucleic acid or I will say the genetic material from a white blood cells. Then in 1928, so almost after 50 years or 60 years, uh, Frederick Griffith actually demonstrated that the, the genetic information from the one bacteria goes into another bacteria through a phenomena which is called as the transformations. Then in the year of 1944, the McLeod and McCarthy actually identified that the DNA is actually a transforming agent, it actually carries the genetic information and then it actually can change the phenotype of the other bacteria. Then uh, in the case of 1952, your Her Hershey and Chase actually confirmed that the DNA is a genetic material uh, with the help of the viruses. And then in, in 1962, the Watson, Crick's and all those people have got the Nobel Prize because when they have discovered the structure of the DNA. So, let us first uh, discuss about the Griffiths experiment to understand that the DNA is the genetic material and then we will talk about the um, McLeod and McCarthy's experiment and then ultimately and uh, at the end we are going to discuss about the Hershey and Chase experiments. So, uh, the Griffiths experiment, so he has used a bacteria which is called as pneumonococcus. This pneumonococcus is actually caused, so he has used the bacteria which is called as streptococcus pneumonia and he has used the two different types of strain, S strain and the R strain. So, S strain and the R strain is also going to be called as, so uh, uh, the S strain uh, which is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a virulent pathogenic strain that is uh, S strain because it is called a smooth strain or the S third strain and the R strain is a recessive strain. So, R strain is the a virulent strain and it is non pathogenic strain known as the R virulent or the rough strain or the R2. So, S strain is actually going to cause the disease whereas R is not going to cause the disease. So, if the S is going to cause the disease, S is actually going to kill the mice, whereas R is not going to kill the mice. So, S strain has a smooth outer coat made up of, of the polysaccharides and the R strain lacks this polysaccharide coat and therefore, its surface appears rough. S3 strain was virulent, possessed a lipopolysaccharide capsule and could kill mice by causing a disease pneumonia and ma made round colonies on a cultural plate. Whereas, the R2 strain was avirulent and lacked a lipopolysaccharide capsule giving rise to the rough shaped colonies onto the cultural plate. So, these are the some of the properties uh, given right. So, uh, serotyp serotypically it can be uh, S R2 or the S3 and uh, morphologically the R strain is a rough strain whereas the S strain is a smooth strain. Then capsule was absent in the case of R strain whereas it is present in the case of uh, S strain and the R strain is avirulent. What is mean by avirulent is that it is not going to cause the disease. Uh, whereas, in the case of uh, S strain it is virulent. So, it is actually going to cause the disease and what disease it is going to cause? It is going to cause the pneumonia and ultimately it is actually going to cause the death of mice. Uh, so, this is the experiment what he has done. So, he has done the experiment using the four different types of conditions. So, case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4. So, in the case 1, what he has done is he has taken the S type of bacteria and that he has injected into a healthy mice 
and after some time the healthy mice is gone right because he developed the uh, disease right pneumonia he developed the pneumonia and that is how he actually died. In the case 2 he has injected the R type of bacteria ok. So, R type of bacteria is a virulent bacteria. So, it is actually not going to cause any kind of disease and that is how this particular uh, uh, mice is actually going to grow and that is how the mice is actually going to live. Then the third experiment what he has done is he has actually uh, denatured the S type of bacteria. So, he has heat killed the S type of bacteria and then he injected that into a healthy mice and that also has not caused any disease and that is how the mice is survived. Then the third is he has taken a heat killed S type of bacteria. So, a virulent, virulent bacteria he has heat killed. So, this is not live bacteria and then he added the R type bacteria which is live. So, this is live, this is dead, dead bacteria and then he mixed them together and in the case 4 and then he injected them into a healthy mice and when he had done that he actually found that the mice have developed the disease and he they also died. So, this was very interesting that something which was not infective because in the case 2 you see that the R strain is not killing, but in the case of uh, in the case 4 the R strain is uh, killing the mice if it is being mixed with the heat killed S2 right or S3 actually. So, uh, these are the 4 different types of conditions right and then what he has done is he has uh, isolated the blood right. Uh, he isolated the blood from this case number 4 and what he found that there was no R bacteria present. It was all the S type of bacteria what is being isolated. So, all the R type of bacteria is actually being converted into the S type bacteria in the case 4 and that is how he said that the material or the uh, material which actually carries the information from this bacteria gone into this uh, ma so material gone uh, from the heat killed bacteria into a R type bacteria and that is how the R type bacteria got converted into a S type bacteria. So, there is a and then that is that is how he actually pointed the term that this phenomena is going to be called as transformations. So, when the Griffith has injected a mixture of heat killed and live bacteria, the mice died and living uh, living S bacteria recovered from the dead mice ok. So, remember that he actually uh, uh, he has killed the he has actually injected a heat killed S type bacteria, but he got the live S type bacteria because the genetic material what is present in the uh, S type bacteria heat killed bacteria were gone into the R type bacteria and that has convert or that has actually started expressing its own genome and that is how it is actually going to cause the generation of S type bacteria. So, Griffith concluded that the R type bacteria had somehow transformed by the heat killed strain bacteria. Some transforming principle transferred from the heat killed S strain had enabled the R strain to synthesize a smooth polysaccharide code and become the S strain. This must be due to the transfer of the genetic material from the S type bacteria to the R type bacteria. However, the biochemical nature of genetic material was not defined from this particular type of experiment right. So, we do not know still that what is actually being transferred whether the DNA or protein or RNA right. So, then we we did uh, they did the further, further more experiments. So, in the meantime the um, Oswald and McCarty and McLeod uh, actually did the more uh, specific experiment to ask whether uh, the, uh, the transform the factors which are actually converted the R type bacteria into S type bacteria whether it is the DNA protein or RNA. So, uh, it was believed that the genetic material was made up of, of the protein. They work on the transforming principle in the fifth experiment to investigate it, its biochemical makeup. So, to determine the biochemicals from the heat killed uh, S type bacteria which could convert the live R type bacteria into S cell, they isolated the biochemicals like they isolated the proteins DNA and RNA from the S cell bacteria and finally found that the DNA from the S bacteria was needed to convert the R type bacteria. 
So what they have done and what they have used for this particular type of experiment, they have used a three different types of enzymes. They have used a DNA -sis. So the function of DNA is that it is actually going to digest the DNA. So it is actually going to destroy DNA. So if you take the DNAs and if you treat any reactions, it is actually going to destroy the DNA. So it is actually going to remove the DNA part. Similarly, they have the RNAs. So RNAs, the function is that it is actually going to digest the DNA, which means it is actually going to destroy RNA part or I will say it is actually going to remove the RNA from the reactions. Similarly, you have the another enzyme which is called as proteases and the target substrate for the proteases is that it is actually going to digest the proteins and uh, it is actually going to destroy the proteins because it is actually going to convert the protein into the amino acids. This means it is actually going to remove the protein components. This means if you have a reaction, right? For example, if you have a reaction and if you treat this with the protease, for example, right? So then this protein, this reaction is going to be a reaction minus protein because you have treated with the protease and that is all you have removed the protein. So these are the some handy enzymes what these people have used to answer the questions which one, which biomolecule is actually the genetic material. So what they have done, they have repeated the same experiment what the Griffith has done that where you have the heat killed S type bacteria and then you have the live R2 bacteria and then uh, when they were taking the heat killed bacteria, they have treated that heat killed bacteria with uh, protease, right. So they have either treated it with the protease or treated it with the RNAs or treated with DNAs. Okay. So in these cases, what you have done is you have removed the protein, right. In this reaction, you have removed the protein. In this reaction, you have removed the RNA and in this reaction, you remove the DNA, right. This means in this reaction, you have the protein and RNA present. In this reaction, you have the DNA and uh, protein present. So what are the things present? You have the DNA and RNA present, right. You have because the protein is already been removed because of you have treated with protease. Then in this one, since you are removing the RNA, you are going to have the DNA and protein. And in this one, you are going to have the RNA and the protein because you have removed the DNA, right. And then he tested which in which condition the mouse is actually going to die. So in this case, when you have no protein, you have no protein, mice is dying, right. This means the protein is not responsible for converting the R bacteria into a virulent S bacteria, right. Similarly, when you have no RNA, right, then also the bacteria of mice is dying because still the R type bacteria can be getting transformed into a S type bacteria. And the third is when you do not have DNA, right. So when you remove the DNA, you are actually going to see that you are having a healthy mice, right. This means in this one you have the RNA and protein but still the mouse is not getting the disease which means the R strain is not getting converted into S strain and that is how the mouse is actually healthy. And what you see in the, even at the cultural level also when they cultured the bacteria what they found that they could be able to recover the live S bacteria in the absence of protein and RNA but they could not be able to isolate the live S bacteria instead they are actually getting the R type bacteria R2 in the case of the third condition when their DNA is not present. So this actually confirmatorily proved that DNA is the genetic material. Now let us talk about the conclusions. So they found that both RNA and protein digesting enzyme had 
no effect on to the transformation proving that the molecule undergoing transformation were either protein or RNA okay or neither a protein or RNA. Transformation was prevented by DNA digestion indicating that the DNA was the transformation agent. So, they came to the conclusion that the DNA is the genetic material, but not all biologists agreed with that. Okay. And then the further experiment were done by the Alfred Hershey's and Hershey and Chase experiment. So, in the Hershey Chase experiment, the researchers on the virus that in fact the E. coli provided additional evidence for the genetic importance of the DNA. The DNA core of the T2 bacteriophage is encased in a protein code. Alfred Hershey's MRC Chase put this theory to the test in the following manner. The radioactively labeled T2 phase in either the protein which means the 35S or they have labeled the DNA with the help of 32P component before injecting them into the bacteria which means they are going to have the bacteriophage where they have labeled the protein or where they have labeled the DNA by the radioactivity. Specifically they infected the non-radioactive E. coli with the radio labeled T2 bacteriophage. So, in the T2 bacteriophage you can have the protein which is uh, 35S which means sulfur labeled or you can have the DNA which is actually going to be the 32P right or the phosphate labeled okay. And that is how they have asked where or which molecule is going from one generation to another generations. So, uh, they injected the bacteria, bacteria with the T2 phase that has been radio labeled either in the DNA component or in a protein component. The infected bacteria were agitated in a blunder and the two fractions were separated by the centrifugations. One fraction contains the empty fast coat that was released from the surface of the bacteria that consists of the protein and therefore carries the 35S radio label. The other fraction consists of the infected bacteria itself. Most of the 32P level was found into the infected bacteria which means when they were doing the agitation what they found is that the protein which is a part of the coat was always been extracellular and it was not being carried within the bacteria right it was not getting into the bacteria. And so when the virus is infecting the the it is coat is remain outside and that is how it is actually going to be uh, present outside. Okay. This means the radio labeled what is what radio labeled protein remain outside whereas radio labeled DNA remain inside. Uh, so, that is why there was no uh, sulfur what has been associated with the bacterial cell whereas in the case of DNA all the DNA was present inside and that is why they after centrifugations the radioactivity was associated with the bacteria. So, by doing this experiment where they were doing the infection followed by blending and followed by centrifugations, what they found is that the protein is extracellular whereas the DNA was associated with the bacterial system. And by doing this experiment the Hershey and Chase concluded that the DNA is the uh, genetic material. So, by the observation they found that the most radioactive protein was released into the saponatant whereas 32P DNA remained within the bacteria. Since genetic material was injected and T2 progeny was produced DNA must have been carrying the genetic information for the T2. This means not only that when the bacteria got lysed it has produced enormous amount of viruses. This means the genetic information was uh, there inside the bacteria to produce the viruses and that was nothing but the DNA right. Uh, uh, as host or the coat of the bacteriophage were not labeled with the 32P and only with 32S, the result of the experiment clearly indicate that the only DNA and not the proteins enter the bacterial cell. Protein coat is left outside all of the genetic data necessity for the creation of a new phage particle is carried by the DNA that entered the host cell. This undoubtedly demonstrated that the DNA not the protein 
serves as the bacteriophage genetic material and that's how the, they have concluded that the genetic material is DNA not the protein. Okay. Then there are several indirect evidences for DNA to be as genetic material. Uh, first evidence is that the DNA regularly present in the nuclei of all cell types. It is equal the amount of DNA present in all cells of an organism. Then amount of DNA is proportional to the ploidy of the cell. Haploid cells have the half amount of DNA than the diploid cells. Nuclear division occurs only after the DNA duplication during the S phase of the interface. This anyway we have discussed when we were discussing about the cell division. Then the different species have different amount of diploid DNA. Out of all macromolecules, DNA is metabolically more stable or the most stable molecule and that is a first criteria that the genetic material should be very stable. Indefinite number of combinations are possible with the four sub bases like ATGC. DNA has some same physical and chemical property in all organisms yet allowed to produce great diversity of the organisms. So, this is was clear that the DNA is the genetic material right and uh, material, but this has been challenged when people have discovered that there is a phenomena which is called as the uh, reverse transcriptase or reverse transcription. When the people have discovered a phenomena which is called as reverse transcription. So, what is mean by the reverse transcription is that the RNA is actually going to give rise to the DNA. Okay. So, this reverse transcription was against the central dogma of molecular biology. Right? It says that the RNA can be able to produce the DNA and by doing so, there was people who said that RNA is also made up of it is very stable right RNA is also stable RNA is also can provide the diversity and since RNA can be converted into DNA is there is a possibility that the RNA could also be behave like a genetic material right. And then the same uh, in under the exceptional cases or some other kinds of cases right. So, then the, again the same debate started whether the RNA could be a genetic material or not. So, to prove that the people have started doing the experiment. Okay. So, RNA as a genetic material. Okay. So, according to the RNA world hypothesis, the RNA was the first genetic material that stored all genetic information and it is believed that the first life arose from it. RNA is thought to catalyze a number of chemical reaction in the primitive cell. The presence of the 2 hydroxyl group in ribose group increase their reactivity, but this reactivity makes them unstable which makes the RNA unfavorable as a genetic material. As genetic material it should be well stable chemically and structurally. So, that was one of the drawback of RNA as a genetic material that it actually contains the 2 prime hydroxyl group and because of that it is actually having the more reactivity compared to DNA. So, ultimately these unstable molecules are replaced by the more stable genetic molecules. During this stage of evolution the DNA molecule emerged. They have replaced RNA's role as both genetic material and structural component. The unstable and degraded nature of RNA has led to the development of double standard DNA genetic material that is both chemically and structurally more stable. So, according to the hypothesis, it is found that the RNA is actually being the preferred material for genetic material in the primitive cell. Okay. So, during the evolution what the cell has found that RNA is good in terms of genetic material because it reduces the steps right. You do not have to go for the transcription you can directly use that particular information to produce the protein. But on the other hand it is unstable. So, what they have done is they have converted the RNA into a double standard DNA and 
that's how you are actually bringing the more stability that, and chemically as well as structural stability into the structure. However, RNA is not being completely animated, they still serve as a genetic material in some systems like the viruses and they catalyze few essential biochemical reactions into the cell. Also, the complex machinery of protein synthesis from DNA is still proceeding through RNA. Okay? So, RNA is very important in terms of relaying the information from the DNA and that is why it is not been excluded from the complete picture of the protein synthesis still the protein is being synthesized from the RNA cell. So, even if you see that the DNA actually stored the, uh, the information, it is RNA who actually uh, uh, you know dictate the production of the protein and that is how RNA is actually responsible for the particular type of phenotype. So, RNA is present as a genetic material in some of the viruses, right. So, virus consists of two parts, nucleic acid and the protein coat, sometimes with additional envelopes. So, virus contains only one type of nucleic acid, either the DNA or the RNA. Viruses have RNA are called riboviruses, they vary in the structure of their nucleic acid. Most of the plant viruses are RNA viruses, either single standard or the double standard. So, you can have the animal viruses, you can have plant viruses, uh, you can have single standard uh, RNA viruses, you can have double standard RNA viruses and uh, in the, even in the plant viruses also you can have the single standard viruses like the TMV or you can have double standard viruses like the Oraya viruses. Uh, then we have the evidence in favor of RNA as a genetic material. So, first evidence that RNA is also has a capacity to carry the genetic information came from the experiment which is conducted on the tobacco mosaic or TMB viruses. So, um, Krieger and Schumann uh, demonstrated in 1956 that the tobacco plant can contract a mosaic disease when exposed directly to pure RNA from TMB. RNA speed treatment rendered the pure RNA incapable of inducing the TMB lesions. Then Franklin, Conhart and Singer uh, demonstrated in 1957 that the progeny viruses from the TMB infection with viruses have RNA from one strain and protein from another strain were invariably of kind determined by the RNA not the protein. So, this is what exactly they have done, they have taken a TMB virus and what they have done is they have removed the caspid, uh, cap, capsid protein, so they have removed it fragmented that into a protein and RNA and then they degraded the RNA with the help of the RNA. So, these are the four components. So, when they take the TMB virus and if they infect the new cells, uh, new uh, leaf, they could found that the infection is happening. When they remove the capsid, okay when they remove the ca capsid part, right. So, it's still it is actually having the RNA, right. And if you remove the capsid part or uh, it is, so if they remove the uh, fragmented, fractionated that into a capsid and the, pro and the RNA, when they taken the capsid protein and infected that to the protein, there is no infection. So, there is no infection, right, no infection. But if you take the RNA and if that infected into the protein and into the leaves, what they found is there is an infection. So, basically the genetic information what was present into the RNA is good enough to produce the virus and that is how it actually causes the disease. When they degraded the RNA with the help of the enzyme RNAs, so there is no RNA, right. They could found that there is no infection, so there is no infection in this case also. So, Rigger and Schumann correct, correctly concluded that the viral genome of TMV is composed of RNA. So, if there is no RNA, then there will be no infection. And then uh, Franklin, Conhart and Single uses the type A and type B TMV virus in this investigation. The RNAs were then isolated, RNA for isolated from the protein coating and then in order to create hybrid viruses, uh, Singer concluded the RNA of the strain with the protein of the other. So, the phenotypically and genotypically identical progeny virus were similar to the parent, parental type from which the RNA had been recovered after rubbing the hybridization or reconstituted viruses onto the living world. So, uh, these people what they have done is they have excluded the RNA of 
they have isolated the RNA of the, from the two different types of TMB viruses like TMB A and TMB B. And when they mix them together, what they could found that they are actually having the, uh, you know, the hybrid uh, viruses what is being produced. So, uh, in conclusion, so, uh, Franklin Conhart therefore come to the conclusion that both the R DNA and RNA can carry the genetic information as a result of all these investigations. His research established that the genetic material for TMV is stored in RNA rather than protein and however, the DNA may always serve as a genetic material, but DNA, RNA is typically non-genetic. RNA only serves as a genetic material in few instances when DNA is not present. So, in summary, what we have discussed, we have discussed that the gene carries the data for the phenotypic expression and these genes are being called as the factor in the case of Mendel. And the chromosome have the gene on them, they are made up of, of the 60 percent protein and 40 percent DNA and stable genetic material that can replicate, store information for expression and undergo the mutation is required. And experiments by the Griffith, Avery, Hershey and Chase have produced results that directly supports the DNA as the genetic material. There are also some circumstantial arguments in favor of the DNA as the genetic material. So, experiment on TMV by the Grigor and Schumann demonstrated in 1956 that the uh, it is the RNA which is actually carrying the information from one generation to another generation and that is how wherever you have the RNA it is actually going to be responsible for generation of or, or causing the disease. Even when they have mixed the two different types of viruses what they found is that they are actually generating the hybrid viruses and uh, the protein has no role in uh, in, in, in carrying the information from one generation to another generation. So, by doing all these experiments, it is concluded that the RNA is not being preferred as the genetic material until the DNA is present. But if the DNA is absent, the RNA is also being taken up as a substitute for carrying the genetic information from one generation to another generation. Or I will say that RNA is being preferred by the primitive uh, organisms or such as viruses and uh, whereas DNA is because DNA is more evolved, so DNA is being uh, taken up by the higher organisms. And that is why very, very, classific, uh, very categorically you can see that RNA is one of most preferred uh, genome in the case of the viruses whereas the uh, uh, DNA is more preferred in the case of higher animals. So, uh, with this uh, brief discussion about the genetic material, uh, we would like to conclude our lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more properties of the genetic material and how it actually has a role in uh, synthesizing the protein and we are also going to discuss about the central dogma of molecular biology. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture, thank you.